So assume we have a table colleagues four and it has the same schema as colleagues three as in the video on dictionary compression. However, one change here is that the values in column street ID cover a big domain. So it's not as dense as here. Here we only have values in the range 0 to 2 including. Here we have values in the range 42 to this number including. So this is a huge space in the integer domain. And so what do we do with that? So there are basically two options in this situation. The first is we clean up this table. How do we do that? Let's look back at colleagues 3. Well, in this table, one difference we see is that those two tuples have the same street ID. So they live in the same street. We don't have it here, so there's redundancy here. There's a duplicate entry pointing to two different entries in the dictionary, which obviously leads to some redundancy. So we don't want to do that. So an obvious thing we can do here is get rid of all the duplicate entries, such that whenever two tuples here have the same street ID in colleagues 3, they should also have the same street ID in colleagues 4. So let's do that. So here I kicked out the duplicates. Now if there's a 3 appearing here in this table, like here and here, it should lead to the same number 4,356,346. And I did that for all of the numbers. Well, of course, this is still not so great because we have smaller numbers and larger numbers. So we could also renumber this in this situation. So basically, if you renumber this, we end up in the same situation as in colleagues 3. So we convert this column, we convert the values in this column to a column of dense values. And that's what I did here. So here I end up with the same values as in the original table, colleagues 3. Of course, if you do that, you have to renumber it in the dictionaries as well. It might also be that not only this table references the dictionary streets dictionary, but other tables might be referencing that dictionary as well. Therefore, it might be if you decide to renumber a specific column here in a table that you also have to renumber many, many tables in the database. That is also the reason why sometimes it is not possible to renumber those street IDs because the impact would be too big in the database system. So what is the second option if you can't renumber the values in that column to end up with a smaller domain? So let's go back to the initial situation. We are in this situation and for whatever reason we are not allowed to touch those street IDs. What can we do? There's still something we can do. So we don't have to naively say, okay, I have to pick a domain that can cover all the values in this range from 42 to whatever that number is, what is it anyway, it's 34 billion. 34 billion, so even a 4-byte integer wouldn't be large enough for that. You would need 5 bytes for this. So what can we do in this situation? Well, there's one interesting compression method that's relatively easy to implement and that could be used in this situation. This method is called 7-bit encoding. So 7-bit encoding is also used, you might have seen that, to represent characters in UTF-8. UTF-8 is one encoding and that uses the same idea. So how does it work? So the main idea is if you have your 8 bits for every byte, so rather than using all of the 8 bits to represent some data, you only use 7 of those bits. Only these 7 bits contain data so the first bit is only used to signal whether there's another byte following. In other words, you read this as follows. If this is set to zero, this means there is no other byte following, no other byte of data is following, which means the number that is represented by this byte is those seven bits here. This is the number we are representing. This is 1010111 in binary, which is 87 in decimal. That is a number represented by this one. Let's look at another example. So let's assume we have a larger number. This number is 11,210. This would be represented in 7-bit encoding as follows. Here, the signal bit, this first bit is set to 1, which means there's another byte following after this one. 
In the second byte, the signal bit is set to zero, which means there's no other byte following, which means we only have two bytes. So it's always a sequence of bytes where the first bytes have the signal bit set to one and the last byte has a signal bit set to zero. So what we have to take here is those bits here, those bits and those bits are the actual data. So if you look at this one, those are those seven bit chunks. So to say this is this value in binary and this is 11,210 in decimal. That is how seven bit encoding works. Here a final example with three bytes. So again, the first two bytes are set to one here. The last byte is set to zero. The actual data can be recovered by just looking at those seven bits, those seven bits, and those seven bits. That's it. That is the number, the binary number represented here. You concatenate them and then you end up with this number, which is 1,434,881 in decimal. So this is relatively easy to implement. This is also very lightweight, CPU friendly, because all of this can be done with some bit operations. So it's basically a matter of checking each byte that comes in in a stream, whether this bit is set to one or whether it is set to zero. If it's set to one, you have to concatenate more bits. There's, there are more bits following. If not, you don't have to do that. So, so all of this can be done with very efficient bit shift in masking operations. So this is a very useful method that can be used in this situation. So let's go back. So that's exactly the situation we have here. We have values from that cover a big domain and that would mean that this value could be represented by a single byte, this one as well. This could be represented by two bytes. This could be represented by two bytes as well. Advantages of this method is that it's beneficial for data of varying length. That's exactly the situation we had in this example. So it's beneficial if the symbol distribution is unknown. So there are other compression methods that first have to get statistics, first have to sample statistics from the data in order to come up with an efficient compression. So in this method, you don't have to know anything about the statistics. So this can be exploited for query processing, for example, for aggregations. Disadvantages are, it's a variable with code. So that's not so nice. If you have a column like this, that's a column we had, colleagues form, this was a street ID column, and then you have in one entry you have one byte, and then here you have two bytes, and then you have one again, maybe there's another three bytes entry, and so forth. So the different values, the different entries in that column have different length. And with that you don't have linear addressing again, so you have to have entry points. So whenever you want to enter somewhere in the middle, you have this problem to, to find out what exactly is this address. So for this you have to introduce so-called entry points. You can for example, for every 10th entry in that column, you can save the offset in a different place. That's a standard way of fixing this problem. Well, and you waste some space, obviously. So you waste something for the signal bits. On the other hand, you can compress it, you gain something, but you also waste something because not all of the eight bits are used to represent data anymore. One bit is now reserved, one out of eight bits is now reserved to represent the signal bit. That's a possible disadvantage. However, in these situations where the symbol distribution is unknown and where the data is of varying lengths, then this is a really beneficial method. And as I said, this is also used to represent characters like in UTF-8. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.